Good morning and welcome. Gerard here. First of all, let me say that I, I so wish I could be there with you all. Uh, it's just unfortunate that diaries and commitments just couldn't be, couldn't be organised. But I so wish that I could be there with you in India. Uh, strangely enough, I'm going to be coming in about three weeks' time. But isn't that always the case? But in the short time that we have together, I'd like to share with you one or two key points about coaching and what is happening in the world of coaching today. You may or may not know that coaching is now classed as the second fastest growing industry in the world. Second, that is, behind the IT industry. And that was uh, figures produced by the CIPD here in the UK a short time ago. There have been some very recent studies done by organisations like PwC, Sherpa Consulting, among others. And they show that coaching is growing like a tidal wave, like a volcano, all around the world. From China, through India, through Japan, to South Africa, to Australia, everywhere you can think. And the reason is simple. Because it works, and it works so well. It is so incredibly effective. From a company and a managerial point of view, of course, we're always interested in ROI, return on investment. So I'd like to draw your attention to um, a small talk I did a few weeks ago to the World HR Congress in Warsaw. And you may or may not be able to see this clearly, but here is, uh, I'd like to show you some slides from one of the PowerPoints that we used during that wonderful event. Here we have return on investment in executive coaching. And the Harvard Business Review shows what the goal of good coaching is. And the bottom line, coaching produced a 529% return on investment and also significant other intangible benefits. And here are some actual examples. The Manchester Review, which looked at over 300 organisations, showed that coaching delivered an average return on investment of 5.7 times. Executive productivity improvements up 53%, organisational strength 48%, quality improvements 48%, retaining executives 32%, and I could go on. Here is a survey done and work done by the AOC, or the Association for Coaching, with more than 600 separate organisations. And they showed that better key management skills resulted in 58% improvement. Job motivation increased 53%, and so on. And I'll just show you one more, because I know this isn't coming out incredibly clearly, but it's the figures, the, the facts I want you to take on board. With an executive team coaching program where the executive team had only six meetings over 10 months, the estimated ROI was 750%. So 750%. Not only is that impressive, but it has been shown to be measurable. So what do we know? We know that coaching as an industry is growing. We know that it's booming. We also know that actually there are not enough what we would call very good quality coaches out there. What does a coach need to be? Well, they need to be three things. QCI. Qualified, competent and insured. The first two are crucial. The third is not relevant in many countries. Qualified. They need to be qualified, which means they've done a good quality bona fide training program with a recognised provider. And there are hundreds around the world. Next, having qualified, they need to become competent. What does that mean? It means that they should go to an independent, worldwide accreditation and standards body, like ours, like the IIC, who evaluate them and make a decision as to whether they are up to the appropriate level. So they are qualified and then competent. The insured is only appropriate in, in some countries. 
Coaching tends to fall into different categories. We get what we call individual coaching. Sometimes we call it life or personal. We get executive coaching and we get corporate coaching. All of those areas are booming right now. Absolutely booming. On the personal side, there are so many growth areas. There's retirement coaching, parenting coaching, self-belief coaching, confidence coaching. On the business side, the growth we are seeing is in about four or five areas. First of all, executive coaching. Next, team coaching. That's growing so fast now. Then we have two newcomers, group coaching, working with groups of managers, helping them to work together and working on specific similar areas. And then we have boardroom coaching, where a coach will come in and work with a senior executive board all together. Funnily enough, I'm coming to India myself in about three weeks time to work with a large multinational organization. Why? Because they want to put in an academy of coaching excellence into their organization. They want to train 700 of their managers as internal coaches. Now why would they want to do that? Well, for a number of reasons. One, we know that coaching works and it makes a tangible and measurable distance uh, distinction it makes a difference within the organization one that you can actually measure we also know that in this troubled times we live in with credit crisis all around the world when many companies are actually cutting their training budget conversely they're actually increasing their coaching budget isn't that interesting because we know that coaching works and I'll leave you with this why does it work well Let's look at two things, managers and leaders. What is the definition? Well, the def definition sounds similar. Managers do things right, leaders do the right thing. Managers do things right, leaders do the right thing. Sounds very similar, but yet it's completely different. Coaching. Managers who receive coaching find that they progress on to become leaders. Coaching turns managers into leaders and it completely transforms teams, groups, divisions, departments and organizations. And I'll leave you with one final little thought, a, a, a new definition of coaching. Um, if, if I can remember my schoolboy days, my, my Latin, um, vim gentis liberantis, releasing human potential. That is what coaching does and that is why it is becoming so popular and it is sweeping the globe like a tidal wave. I hope you have a wonderful conference. I so wish I could be there and I look forward to maybe spending time with you as teams or individuals and maybe sharing a coffee together on one of my future and many visits to India. Thank you.